So folks, the IRS says that there are thousands of Americans that can receive an additional $1,200 stimulus check. In this video, I'll be going over how you can receive more financial relief from the federal government, as well as what President Biden and many of our politicians in Congress are doing to pass a fourth stimulus check. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. I truly appreciate everyone's amazing support. And before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Folks, Arkansas just became the third state to announce plans to cancel the extra $300 per week federal benefits the unemployed people are receiving. The state joined Montana and South Carolina, who had announced a similar decision last week and reflects a new Republican strategy aimed to push more people back to work. Kevin Brady, the top Republican on the House Ways and Means Committee, said on Friday, more states are predicted to follow. Ever since the CARES Act was passed in 2020, folks, Republicans had argued that the supplemental federal unemployment benefits were a disincentive to return to work and could stifle economic recovery. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham echoed many Republicans in saying that last year, the extra money could hamper the ability of businesses. Senator Graham said, if a person is making $23 an hour on unemployment, it's going to be hard to get you back to work for a 17-hour job. At the same time, the $600 unemployment checks, which have now been scaled back to $300, had been an essential lifeline given the swiftness and severity of the economic collapse in 2020. Millions of Americans are relying on unemployment checks as their main source of income. Several studies confirmed that the initial CARES Act benefits, including the enhanced unemployment benefits, were crucial to keeping Americans afloat. In addition, everybody, Republicans were emboldened after the Bureau of Labor Statistics released data last week showing that the economy had only added 266,000 jobs last month in April, far below expectations. Hours after the unemployment data was released, the governor of Arkansas announced that the state would stop providing the extra $300 payments. The governor said that the, that the state's economy was rebounding so quickly that it did not need to continue with the payments. Republicans tore into the jobs report claiming that Biden's policies were contributing to a worker shortage, but Biden and others defended the report in the trillions of dollars in aid that have been unleashed. Biden also said that more help is needed, and we're still digging out of an economic collapse that cost us 22 million jobs. The White House recently elaborated with Press Secretary Jen Psaki, stating that it does not believe the extra benefits are leading to a shortage of workers. Jerome Powell stated last week that it was not clear federal unemployment benefits were causing a labor shortage. He continued saying that it wouldn't be a big factor for much longer because he expects the federal government will not extend payments past September. Those who are unemployed and stand to potentially receive upwards of $4,000 in extra federal payments through September may beg to differ. According to the IRS, more than 1.2 million Americans across the country either returned or did not claim or cash the checks approved in March 2020 from the CARES Act. The uncashed or returned checks amount to about $2 billion in total. And whether Americans get a Fort stimulus check all depends on lawmakers in Congress. Representatives Rashida Tlaib and Pramila Jayapal reintroduced the Automatic Boost to Communities Act, and that bill would immediately provide a $2,000 payment to every person in America as critical relief during the crisis, followed by $1,000 recurring monthly payments through the ongoing crisis. That is all the news in this video, folks. If any of you guys found this video useful and helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends and family. The chair will take this occasion to update her policies of January 4th, 2021 and December 15th, 2020 regarding the requirement to wear masks in the hall of the house during the coronavirus crisis. Consistent with updated guidance from the Office of the Attending Physician, the Chair wishes to inform members that while masks continue to be required in the Hall of the House, members are permitted to remove their mask temporarily while under recognition. That means when members are speaking. To be clear, uh, members and staff must wear masks in the Hall of the House at all times, except that a member may remove their mask when recognized by the Chair in addition, members presiding as chair may remove their mask when speaking. This announcement is incorporated within the policy on conduct during a covered period of January 4th, 2021, and the Sergeant of Arms is directed to enforce mask requirements consistent with power over the commission. Much more recently, one of the FEC's most liberal commissioners reaffirmed that the bipartisan structure was established, quote, to ensure that there was not going to be a partisan effort to use investigations against one political party or another, end quote. And yet, 
in this sweeping legislation, which our Democratic friends keep characterizing as a voting rights bill, they go out of their way to make the FEC partisan. Nothing to do with ballot access, everything to do with raw power. This legislation would convert the FEC into an odd-numbered body where President Biden would pick the tie-breaking vote, the exact outcome that was originally feared. The regulator of our democracy becoming controlled by one side would be hardwired into the rules entirely by design. This is so plainly unfair, so plainly an attempt to stock the deck, that I'm not really sure what more needs to be said. Anyone who wants to talk about reforming the FEC should start with making the existing term limits for the FEC commissioners meaningful. Right now, two Democratic appointed commissioners have stayed long past their length of terms. One has been, quote, held over, end quote, since her term expired 11 years ago. This amendment would eliminate the bizarre and inexcusable attempt to make the FEC a partisan body and instead actually cap the FEC commissioner's tenures at 12 years. So I would encourage my colleagues' support of my amendment. I'll respond, and then I, I think there may be others. <clears throat> uh, right now, we have a dysfunctional Federal Election Commission. Everyone knows that. And um, this would, if we did nothing, leave in place a dysfunctional and deadlocked FEC. Hundreds of enforcement cases have languished in the past few years. It's not fair to candidates or to the public or anyone who depends on the fair administration of law. The FEC has not enacted any major disclosure rules after Citizens United. Uh, it can't even agree to hire a permanent general counsel. Um, there have been no permanent general counsel for more than seven years. What the Form of the People Act does is to set up a five-member commission uh, instead of a six-member commission. Um, and you, it clearly states that no more than two of the five commissioners can be from the same political party. So no one party can take over the commission. It also sets up a blue ribbon panel to help name nominees to the commission. It will make the nomination process more fair and transparent. The status quo actually only benefits those who are messing around with the system. On either side, if you want to say that. I tend to say it's more on one side. But that's what it does. Uh, there's no referee on the field, and I think we are much better off, just like so many commissions that do have, I would say, respect. The FCC, the Consumer Product Safety Commission. These commissions are not even-numbered commissions, and uh, they have done a lot of good work. 